team profile. It's a typical Stoops team. Yeah. New offense coordinator. Struggle to throw the ball, but defense is really good. I would say their defense this year is arguably the best he's had mm. in Lexington. It's a really good defense. I think it's got multiple draft picks on it. I think he's got some high draft picks on it. Um, all SEC cornerback Maxwell Harrison has not played the last couple games. He's pro- I don't think he's going to play on Saturday, at least as of right now, and they really haven't even missed a beat. Like, it's a really good defense. Um, South Carolina, they gave up 24 points. One, one touchdown was on a pick six. And I believe the last two, the last three scoring drives, they started on Kentucky side of the field or right over midfield. So even when they've given up some scores, um, it's been kind of, you know, the field position has got them a couple times. But um, Vandy was like really the first team, I think, to score an 80 plus touchdown, touchdown drive mm. on them this season. And so it's been a really good defense. Um, they've never been a turnover machine producing wise under Stutes, but they're uh, producing takeaways this year. And so the defense is where it all starts. They are really good on defense. Uh, it was a ton of starters <laughs> return for this defense this year for the Wildcats. And look, right near the top of the country and the SEC in many categories. You know, all you got to do is look at point totals. Held Georgia to 13 points, Old Miss mm-hmm. to 17. Uh, and once again, Brad White <laughs> has got that unit playing at a high level. And to me, that's been the side of the ball that's given Florida the most fits in this winning streak. Yeah, I think – even since Napier's gotten there, I think yeah. Brad White has really won that matchup. And that's been the main reason Kentucky's won um, these last couple seasons, even before the 2021 game. Um, it was Dan Mullen had the famous line, we outgained them. Yeah. <laughs> um, but Kentucky had the goal line stands there at the end. And uh, Brad White's team, he's a, he's a really good coordinator. Kentucky's been able to hang on to him. Um, and he's got, I would say, his most talented defense. And you mentioned the score totals, but I also think – you know, they they struggled a little bit with Diego Pavia and that offense, which is hot, something they won't see the rest of the year. But they they had Carson Beck rattled in that game, and I was really surprised by that. And then the next week, they gave Jackson Dart some fits down there. And those are two, you know, those quarterbacks probably aren't having the years that we all thought they would have. Um, but still, really good college quarterbacks in Kentucky um, – really had both of them contained and um, just kind of buttoned up for most of those games. And really, and they, they, that was the reason, I think, if you go into the game, that Kentucky had a chance to win both those games in the fourth quarter is because they kept darting back season-low passing yards were both against Kentucky. Yeah. And so um, they've done a really good job. And it starts, I think, with the D-line um, and how they're able to stop the run game. Um, they, they're able to – they kind of make Georgia and Ole Miss both one-dimensional – and they're a hard front to run against. Um, Kirby Smart and Lane Kiffin. Now you can consider some of this coach speak, but they both like Kirby Smart said during his interview in the game, "What's giving you problems?" He, and he laughed and said, "Well, their front's giving us problems. We can't block them." <laughs> and then Lane Kiffin said, "All like in two press conferences before the game, he said this front's really good. It's going to be a different type of game. They're going to really challenge us." And then after the game, they asked him, "You know what happened?" It's like, well, they're they're really good on defense the line. They got a really good front. They got pros. And so that's really where it starts for Kentucky. Both linebackers are really, really good. Derek Jackson and Jamon Dumas Johnson. And this, mm. the secondary play was a weakness last year. And I think it's overall top to bottom. It's been improved even without Maxwell Harrison these couple games. So it's a well-rounded um, defense that, gets, that can stop the run. It's better against um, the pass. And they're playing a little bit more aggressive um, on third down this year. They're, they're not a man defense, but when it gets to third and seven, third and eight, they're going to play man. They're going to play man. They're going to bring some heat and try to get off the field. Um, and it's just been a really effective defense, and it's been a really fun defense to watch to this point because, again, Carson Beck's a guy who threw for like 500 yards against this defense last year. And then the next year they just totally shut him down. And then they were the first – they were kind of the, uh, I think, the case study. Well, this is what you maybe need to do against Ole Miss because mm-hmm. like the first team to kind of slow down that Ole Miss t- team this year. And so, they're again, they're at Brad White's – uh, one of the better coordinators, I think, in the country, and they're having a really good season on defense. And they, but they got players. Like again, I think right. you're going to look up on draft day, and you're going to see Kentucky linebacker, Kentucky defensive lineman, Kentucky defensive lineman, Kentucky safety. You're going to see guys come off the board, and it's going to be like, oh, no wonder they were good. They had some guys who were good enough to play <laughs> on some NFL teams. Uh, a couple more thoughts, Adam. Uh, I, I had this conversation on the social media not long ago. With this defense, we know how good Brad White is. Is Maybe split is not the right word for this, but how much is it Brad White? How much is it Mark Stoops? 
Yeah, it's a great question. I think Mark has a big um, oversee, like just the philosophy of what they want to do. Okay. In big pictures type things, like play style, ball, like how we're going to play ball control and complementary football. But I think very much from a game planning and a scouting and a play calling aspect, Brad is Brad White's running that defense in a lot of in a lot of ways. And I think he is he's got and he's been there a long time too. He's been there yeah. since twenty eighteen. Um, he the defenses before Brad White got on campus haven't been close to the caliber since mm-hmm. he's been there. I, I don't think that's a coincidence. I think he's had a big part in that, and I would say like you know he most. The large majority of that defense is Brad White's, but there is philosophy wise and big picture type stuff. I think Stoops has probably a heavy sway of what they want to do, but that's what a head coach is supposed to do. Right, right. I mean, Brad White might be the key cog of getting this thing turned around against Florida because, I mean, that's just. Yeah, yeah, it's well, that side of the ball. Josh Allen was good. Yeah. Like yeah, he was true. good for three, but I mean, White showed up Jackson, there. I'm here in Jacksonville. Yeah. So yeah, I know. Yeah. And then he, um, he took off in 18 when White got on campus, yeah. and he credited a lot of his big year to White directly to White for getting okay. him ready. And so, and then after that, he got promoted to DC, and they've, you know, they've had probably this is probably the third I would say top 15 to top 20 caliber defense they've had, but they've been top 40 every year, and that's something at Kentucky because that's something they they always struggle to stop teams, and now they're able to consistently be I would say a top half. Or top bare minimum top ten defense in the league, and that's something we, that they, we know how hard that is not to do. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah, and so that was something they always struggle with, and now it's just kind of a given, and it's just how good can they be? And I think Brad White deserves a lot of the credit for that. And then I think, and also they're recruiting, they the recruiting has slowly gotten better too, so they're able to fill holes easier than they were in the past. Adam, last thing right here, of course, you mentioned excelling and stopping the run. Well, Florida's going to start DJ Lagway this week. And look, you think Billy Napier would – look, Billy Napier wants to run the ball anyway. It may force his hand with a young quarterback to try and lean on it, but probably going to be pretty difficult against this. Montreal Johnson's out for Florida as well. Uh, so I don't know if the matchup is really too good for Florida. Not too many teams are running on Kentucky anyway. So, you know, it bears the question, you know, what, what – what does Florida come out and try and do? You know, you got a young quarterback. You can't – it doesn't look like you can run for a lot of success against this team, but do you let a young quarterback try and air it out? Yeah, one thing I would watch here is Kentucky is number two nationally in Havoc rate. Yeah. Now, Kentucky's played the least amount of snaps of any defense. One, they played a half game week one. The game got canceled. That's right, that's right. And then two, just – stylistically how they play and then they played a team that plays slower than anyone in Vanderbilt Mm -hmm. Um, so they don't have they don't have a lot of snaps so when you look at the tackle for loss for all numbers it's not high but if you just do play by play it's it's up there the pass rush is effective when it needs to be Um, they create tackles for loss and um, they get turnovers and when they this team has won the turnover battle they've won games and when you play like Kentucky does where it's just Conservative on offense, win the game on defense, that is a really key area. And that would, to me, would be the aspect here. I think I would, like from Kentucky's side, I would be more worried if Mertz was back there just because of the ball security aspect he was bringing. Where I think, you know, what you've seen from DJ Lagway, at least when I kind of dove in this week, mm-hmm. David, there's just been more kind of turnover plays or turnover type plays. But there's also the volatility where he's probably more explosive right. on a down by down basis. So, what does that give? But Kentucky, typically under White, they don't, they don't give up a lot of explosives. 